They've just all waited. Green Yard is absolutely packed to capacity. Nobody's left because they know that this could be a quality final with some pretty hard stuff as well. The, the, uh, that's uh, Kaukiri, who's uh, one of the most powerful runners in the uh, Chrysler side. But it's the uh, Fijian side, Nawaka, who kick off. The condition's still absolutely first class. The pitch has been in great order. And uh, although it's been dull, we've had no rain. And, well, there's the scene here at the Green Yards and the... Uh, and for the final of this 110 Melrose Seven Aside Tournament with two of the great rugby playing countries in the world represented out on the field there. And right away, Drio, the big fellow, took it. And we got the interception there by Kaukiri. But they'll have to come back for the scrimmage. They are the things that make the difference in finals and winning and losing tournaments. A great chance to open the account. It was a wide open space for a clear run to under the post. Knocked on and the Fijians will get the ball again. That's the thing about the Fijians. They use the ball very, very well and they have done all day. Lovely break, but referee's whistle going because there was a bit of fooling on jerseys. Of course, forwards do try to hold the opposition into the scrummage, don't they? Yeah, they do. I mean, it's a situation the blind side becomes very attractive to the scrum half, but what you see there is uh, the scrum holding back to allow the space and the referee very sharp, and that's important. It's a good start by the referee to pick up these wee things. And that is Gerard Fraser, who's done some great uh, running and indeed kicking for Christchurch. 21-year-old, has played uh, against Queensland in the Super 12 recently, one of the most promising young players in uh, New Zealand. And looking very like Mark McKenzie, uh, you know, the little Stirling County standoff, huh? Yeah, I don't think Mark McKenzie would have a hairstyle like that, though, Bill. I think that's something that my two-and-a-half-year-old daughter has. You will be hearing from a solicitor on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely pass away there. Now then, this is the strong man, Kaukiri. Christ just trying to work it. They've, they're lined out across the pitch. Cox took it. He's the captain of the side. And you can see how the Fijians, they just uh, take advantage of anything that's going. It's a live drill who is half held back. And a little dummy there to Nawabu. But it's... Uh, Rio who scored the first try, his fourth try of the tournament. And it just goes to show, if you make a mistake, the Fijians will punish you. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. It's a great, it's just a straight kick and chase. But what Fraser has got in the Christchurch side is he's got gas. But if you just watch the bounce of the ball, favours him kindly. Up it comes. He doesn't panic. Offloads the runner. Everybody takes the dummy. Thanks very much. Under the black dot. 7-0. And Norman Lingari has uh, popped over the conversion, his 15th conversion of the afternoon. He's added five tries as well. And so it's seven points to nil, and they've played just three and a half minutes. And as with the sevens now, the team that scores have to take the restart kick. And uh, that's how not to take the restart kick. And uh, Lingari will be given a little rocket from uh, Nawavu, the captain because if you put it out in the full, the other team are given a free kick at the centre. Yeah, good attacking situation for Christchurch. You know, it's criminal when you fail to make the 10 yards or kick it out in the full, because as before, it was a contested scrum which could go anyway. Now it's free kicks and penalties, and it gives Christchurch an attacking situation. The top kick was taken by Taukiri. That's Davis feeding out Alex Davis, who's been uh, a real starter, and he's the one with the, uh, with the black scrum cap on. And uh, you notice the power and strength in the upper body of both of these teams. A little bit of interference there as uh, Vula got it going. And uh, Vula was following up his own kick, who got on there very quickly. And there is a real chance there, or there was for Naevo, but it's gone into touch. And so kind of hear him, scare him at the moment, isn't it? It is. I mean, you can tell it's a final because, it, guys, there's big hits that are going in. I mean, that's the difference between the Southern Hemisphere sides. You know, that they're up in your face and they throw their body into everything. And you can tell that the players are fearing and waiting for the big hit. And that just puts an edginess about their game. Big hits indeed. There have been a lot of those this afternoon, I can tell you. Well, they squeezed up that line out, didn't they? And that's Fraser scooting along there and, uh, well, playing... Uh, Davis trying to have a go, and really, uh, they were playing with fire there, and it's the pickup, up and uh, the score, but uh, his lordship is not amused. Uh, Misi Naevo is not amused. He thought he'd scored. 
Yeah, I mean, they're having to try and play out of there. They're under pressure. It's placed, I think, he's been penalised for coming in from the wrong side. There he is. They play that so well, they tend to track in behind the point of contact rather than actually trying to be in on the supporting man. And, of course, at the tackle situation now with the new laws, you've got to come in from your own side, haven't you? Yeah, you certainly do, although in sevens it becomes a wee bit of a, a lottery because sometimes they don't uh, have offsides in sevens when it's broken play. But you can tell the amount of pressure and the work that these players have put in. That doesn't look like an injury. It actually looks like a touch of cramp at the moment. Well, look at that. Not a soul has left the green yards. They're, uh, they're hoping to see some great rugby football in this final. It's been, been, a, bit, been a bit scrappy so far. But, of course, those two sides have uh, tremendous potential in sevens. And I think, Gary, they give you so little time on the ball, don't they? Yeah, that, the way they work is putting a lot of pressure on people and making you perform under pressure, and that's when the mistakes come. I think the mistakes have come about today because players have been asked to do things with very, very little time, and that's the difference between the top level and everybody else at the moment. So Gerard Fraser has hoofed the ball up to a line-out midway between halfway and... Uh, the Christchurch 22, and uh, there's the throw in coming from Fraser. Nicely back to him. Now then, Taukiri, Davis. They're very good at slowing things down, and that enables them, as the great London Scottish Sevens did in the 60s. They slow it down, and they suddenly then use their tremendous acceleratory power. But of course, it's not working just too well here, although they've got a real chance here now as they. See all kinds of little uh, bits and pieces to try and kid on the opposition. That's it, Daryl Cochran, who's done some great scoring so far. Dokiri, or Tukari, as they say. Yes, he did well. And he's controlled it for uh, his follow-up players. But the Fijians have swept out to the right. They've blocked the whole way. And they... Well, it's a three to one with the Fijians here, although there's a chance for Davies. Now watch how he'll walk for a bit, and then suddenly, broom, he's gone. Well, not this time. Yes, the referee's whistle hadn't gone, and so uh, you can see that it's, it's, uh, it's quite tough out there. They don't muck about those fellas. Uh, certainly at, at Hong Kong Sevens, whenever New Zealand meet Fiji, it's a battle. You know, th there it is, boom, and look how high that is. I mean, he's right in there. That's a, that's uncalled for because it's a big guy against a wee, and that's not very fair. He's almost as big as you, four feet nine. His, his, his socks are bigger than me, Bill. <laughs> oh, this is a crucial area there, and, uh, well, the Christchurch fella did pretty well. Davis with the long feet out. Now, Cochran can shift, and he's been, he's been one of the best runners of the lot, but clearly the... Uh, the Fijian fellas have uh, looked at the video or had a good look at the matches and decided that he's the danger man and they've marked him out of it. It's getting just a little bit uh, testy now and uh, the referee Alan Lewis of Ireland uh, who's been at the Green Yards before for a Reavers match against the uh, New South Wales Waratahs he's uh, going to have to stamp his personality on this. Um, see him holding, holding the scrum back until he gives the command to to engage the one thing is that the New Zealanders will not back out of the confrontation in this time still a chance though yes that's Fula who's a clever little runner he's uh, he's been a danger man all day wonderful cover tackle there by Alex Davis though however there's the little chip kick through by Mingari and he's picked up and he's going to score it's a try for Lingari. That's his uh, second try only of the afternoon. But uh, it's 12 points to nil for Nawaka of Fiji. Yeah, it's just skills. That's all it is. It's keeping the ball alive. It's having pace to pull the Christchurch defenders around the place. We shove the ball into the open space. Great tackle, though, by Davis. He pulled him in. But just watch this. All the skills in the book. Stands him up. We grubber. Great weight on the ball. And then... That is just absolute class. Fakes to score the try and still has time to pick up and go around and score. Pure magic, no doubt. And here's the same fellow, Lingari with the goal kick, just fading past the left-hand post, Nawaka but it's 12 Nawaka. points to nil for Nawaka from Fiji. Uh, just a minute to go to half-time. Ten minutes each way, the final, of course, and they have a couple of minutes break at, um, at, at half-time. There's the restart again. Lingari has to do the whole thing himself, virtually. Now then, 
interception lovely bit of running there Craig Cox was the fellow the captain of the side who got it going for Christchurch now they need a try very quickly Cochrane has a go and there as I was telling you the change of place by this fellow Darrell Cochrane it was a magnificent run by him he's done it all afternoon he kicks them on he slows them down and then he takes off in a flash great stuff that's what they've got to do, Christchurch. They're having to work so hard to try and keep the ball alive. Great awareness here by Davis just to flick the ball over his head. And Cochrane, well, he says, I'm going to chance it. I'm going to take you on man for man and see if you've got the gas. And that's what they've got to do. They've got to get the ball to him as much as possible in open space because he looks about, him and Davis look the only two players capable of matching the Fijians for pace. That was Darrell Cochrane's sixth try the afternoon, but Fraser couldn't convert it, and so it's 12 no, points to well. five for Nawaka and, and they're into injury time at the break referee Alan Lewis blows his whistle for half time they'll have a two minutes break now and uh, it's delicately poised Gary, who's your money on? My money would have to be on the Fijians, Bill. But I think from the crowd's point of view, I think the crowd have got a wee tendency to hope that Christchurch win this. You know, the big club side from New Zealand, everybody's talked about the Fijians for, for the last four or five days since they've arrived. And uh, you, you can't see your money past them because Christchurch are having to work so hard. And just look at the unity. The whole backup crew are on there. Medics, managers, you know, they're all in there. They're talking about how they're going to keep the ball alive. But they have people that can score from any one of their seven players. Christchurch at the moment, you can only really look at Cochrane and Davis as being the try scorers. Christchurch, of course, have a typical hard-nosed New Zealand approach to things, don't they? They don't smile much, do they? No, they don't smile much. And, you know, uh, I was speaking to them and I was saying, you know, how, how they found New Zealand with the fact that they were so poor in the World Cup and, and they were out, you know, the atmosphere within the country. And they looked at me as if to say, how have you any right to question New Zealand rugby? But they have, they have this attitude that they are the only team in this tournament today capable of meeting the Fijians physically. And they've proven that so far. They need to get the next try in the first half, in the second half, sorry. Well, you'd see the uh, crowd there enjoying every moment of this. Um, we've had some wonderful rugby football, one or two upsets as well. Uh, but it's been a typical Melrose Sims afternoon. And uh, those fellas know that they've got a little job in their hands here. They've got to get an early score, as Gary suggested, because if Fiji get the first score, then you feel that they will they'll just take, take charge. Can I ask you, Bill, are you, quite, are you quite happy that it should be 10 minutes of final, or would you like to see it still say seven and a half minutes like every tie during the day? No, I'm, I'm not happy about the two minutes interval. I mean, they've only played about three hours of seven to side rugby. I mean, <laughs> why, why do they need a two minutes interval? In any event, we're ready to start the second half with Fraser getting it started for Christchurch. And their typical bit of skill there by Naevo, this huge... Uh, Block forward of theirs. They've got two beanpole fellas in Nawavu and Naevo, and they, uh, well, they're just like basketball stars. Yeah, the ball is so comfortable. They're, 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 their skills are just there. You know, they've honed it on the beach, they're outside, they're playing all the time, and you can see that they're comfortable with the ball. Dukari. Dukari gives it out to Davis, and there again, this business of slowing it down so that they can use their acceleratory powers. They weren't able to do it there. Mustin bundled up. He's the fellow who does an impersonation of a rugby commentator. Is it better than me, actually? In any event, Davis coming. Oh, Naevo with the tackle. And it really is rough stuff now, I tell you. Uh, there's no holds barred out there. Now it's a real chance for Mustin, the big uh, lock forward. But uh, the Fijians cover the width of the field so well. They've still left three men out here and they've got a, a sweeper in behind as well. Now it's Fraser feeding out. Now this is the fellow who's caused a bit of trouble for people, Darrell Cochran. And there, a nice little uh, burst of pace by Gerard Fraser. Into the Christchurch half, made up from Taukiri. Is there Mustin again? And Matthew Mustin, a big kick, but all he's done is... Uh, given the ball to the Fijians and that's a that's a, a great mistake some great work there that was uh, Vula taking it on then the feed out there to Nawavu this is more like it they've got space out there on the left great running there from uh, their number nine that's uh, Drew, the big tough center and uh, he's 
taken a lot of holding. Very quick tackle there by Lingari. And uh, the Fijians are putting all the pressure on. They're deep inside the Christchurch 22 now. And there they're quite, uh, quite content to almost concede possession as it were. Look at them streaked across, right across the pitch. Yes, no way through there for Craig Cox. Very well fed out from Spider Hunter. Now then, is there any uh, ability chance here for Cochrane to pick up his feet and go? He almost did, but see the physical nature of their tackling. A lovely pass out there from Alex Davis. Now this is more like it. The crowd are running for Christchurch. There is a real chance out here for Fraser. Has Fraser got the pace to go? And Alex Davis thumped down in that tackle and got up very quickly indeed. That was good play by him. Now there is a hint of an overlap out there if they like to step on it. It's an effort there by Spider Hunter to go. Big hoof on. Taken out a man who didn't have the ball there. But uh, And the Fijians will have to watch and not get offside. Tokiri or to carry as they call him he's been a lovely playmaker out to Fraser Fraser having a go and he's away now then this is the important bit oh the pass was such a poor one and they'll be annoyed at that because here's the counter attack coming now that pass was slightly forward the referee was beautifully in line and Naevo for the second time in this tie thought that this moment had come for a great try. We talked about it, these are the things that win you and lose your tournaments. Fraser, you'd put your money on him finding a great pass for Davis and it just goes to ground, you know, it was a poor pass. Let's be fair, he's under the post, you're looking at tying the scores and you know, it, you have to take your chances against the Fijians. What is noticeable in this uh, final, Bill, is that it's very Southern Hemisphere. They're conceding, they're conceding possession and just marking territory. They're not it's not a border type of sevens final where they're competing for every scrap of possession on the ground. They're just surrendering it. But that could cost the New Zealand Christchurch side uh, the tournament. And of course, like a good side, they've marked out the opponents who are most dangerous, haven't they? Along the line then, Tokiri. Now then, Cochran again has the, a, a change of pace that is very deceptive, but look how the fellas have stuck to him there. Matane Tambua is out there as a fresh man, and he's already put in two tackles. Now there's a 4-2 to two overlap if they like to really have a go at it. Fraser, Fraser actually out. Now then, Davis to go. That was Cox feeding out. Now it's Fraser once again. Cochrane and oh, what a thump he would have got there. Now then, Tokiri, can he go? He's a powerful fellow. But again, the pass much too fast. So they played five minutes of the second half. It's 12 points to five for Nawaka. And uh, there the uh, big fellow, to Hemi Tokiri, the bearded lad from... Uh, from Canterbury, who's also played for Taranaki and for the New Zealand Maoris, so he's a, he's a, a class above most. Now then, the Fijians have two fellows, three fellows spaced out from virtually right across the pitch, in defence, that is. Their backs are very widely spread. It's their put-in, of course, and that's why uh, the Christchurch backs are lying up flat. But, oh, lovely break. Siru has gone. Lovely little kick ahead. He was taken out. The bounce was a bad one for the Fijian. Spider Hunter was back there brilliantly. That's him. Spider Hunter, a scrum half in 15s. His first uh, year with Christchurch. Now they brought on some of the big fellas to try and put a little bit of freshness in. Fraser going. There is a chance now for Cochrane. Now has Cochrane got the speed to go? And is he going to take them on? Murdoch has come up. Simon Murdoch, the little blondie. And uh, well, you see, he's thrown down there by Lingari. Still a chance for Fraser. Fraser having a go in his own. The cut judge's flag is down. And Fraser is given the try. His second in the afternoon. It's a very important one. Yeah, that's great play. Cochrane there, he's been a threat all day. He pulls in two players. 
and Fraser well. He kids on, he's going to kick. He kids on, he's going to pass. Then he puts his head down, and yeah, that is a good try. I mean, I've noticed, Bill, if the Christchurch keep the ball alive, the Fijians, fitness-wise, they look as though they're beginning to tire a wee bit when they're having to chase the game. And, uh, you know, Christchurch have got a chance. The one thing that's pleasing me the most about the final is we have a competitive final, and it's not a runaway. Competitive is certainly the word. <laughs> There's no doubt. Now then, Fraser. Uh, that's one of my duck hooks, typical with a forward. I can do that as easy as by. It stays at 12 points to 10 for Nawaka. And uh, I reckon they've about three minutes or so of the match to go. And so we've a real contest on here. The uh, manager of the Fijian side there was uh, looking suitably anxious. He's a Frenchman called Frédéric Laurent. And uh, a very pleasant personality indeed. Already asked for a video of this so that you can show it all around the country. Yeah, they were saying they've actually, after uh, the World Cup, they named the bridge in Fiji the Melrose Bridge. So, uh, you know, it, they, they know the tournament and they know everything about the competition. Boy, the big man uh, has been brought on to freshen up the uh, Fijian attack. Bit out there from Drew once again now then. Another marvellous bit of running, this is Makani Tambua. And I was hoping he might not get the ball, but he's going to score a brilliant try. We'll try it again, Makani Tambua, his fourth try of the afternoon. And that gives Nawaka a little bit of breathing space. 17 points to 10, they lead now. And uh, we've, we've only about a minute or so to go. Makani Tambua, I'll get it in early, Bill. That's all I'll have to say from now on. He takes off. What he is, he's in, not in the top gear, but watch the movement in his legs. Look at the way he changes angles and direction. He pulls the defence all over the place. He could win a Twister Championship because he can get himself all over the place. His angles are running superb, and that could be the clinching try with less than three minutes to go. 19 points to 10 with the conversion, and uh, so it looks as if Nawaka from Fiji are going to follow on behind their national seven who uh, won at the Gala Tournament in 1991, only on that occasion a wet, filthy day, and the Fijians showed they could play sevens in those kind of conditions as well. Not been needed today, lovely weather for seven-a-side rugby, and uh, you can bet your bottom dollar, Christ just won't lie down, they're New Zealanders after all, this is Daukiri, Fraser has looped outside him, but they've given it instead to the young fellow Simon Murder. Now then, look at the Fijian tackling, how, how they manage often to pull a man down or get him onto the wrong side of the ball. Uh, that's one of the great features of the play. That was Seru taking it. Now it's this man again, Matani Tumbua. Look, long, long passes to open up the way. That's the big captain, Nawavu. Almost through was Voa, who's come on as a replacement to uh, give fresh legs. And there's the surge away, and it's going to be a try for Naevo by the look of it. Well, knocked down 10, 12 metres out, but uh, they still will hope to win the ball. The referee, Alan Lewis, waiting to see if it would come out. But in fact, he's given the put into Fiji, and they've got all kinds of options open here, because the line is only, what, 15 metres away. Yeah, they have. I mean, they're doing very well, the Fijians. You have to admire the levels of fitness in the two sides because they've played some grueling ties and they've played some great stuff, but it's the physical encounter today in the final that's taken it out of everybody. But they've always had the edge of Fijians. The Christchurch side have had to work very, very hard, and at least Melrose have one representative in the final, Gordon Pollock, the physio. That's, that's our only claim to fame today, Bill. He's a great little enthusiast, though, isn't it? Those fellows are at the heart of the rugby game. Yeah, they certainly are. And it's just, it's great, you know, you heard JJ and, and John Beatty talking about it before the final. The atmosphere about the ground, the people inside the stadium, you know, it just lends itself to a great day and a carnival atmosphere. And it's been a, it's been a super afternoon's rugby. They're a bit of bad luck for Simisi Naevo, who's having to go off the field, isn't it? Bad luck when you've played through four ties. Um, just towards the end of the competition, he go off with an ankle damage. Seru decided to have a go on his own, still managed to get the pass away. That was quite extraordinary. And once again, Matani Tumbua does it once more. I tell you what, he's had a lovely afternoon too. A super try for him, his fifth try of the tournament. That ties it up for Nawaka, leading by 24 points to 10, and time is up. Yeah, they're pulling that Murdoch does well, he hassles and puts here, but Matana Timbua, here he is, you know, changes angle, nice little chip, 
and to win sevens tournaments they say you need the bounce of the ball well that is a Fijian bounce of the ball right in his hand that possibly is the end of the tournament referee blows the final whistle were the winners the Fijians Bill and it has been a superb performance by those big fellas from Fiji they've won the final by 26 points to 10